There is a specter. Yes, a specter hanging over. That means something ominous. A specter hanging over the 2022-2023 season. I won't call it a dark cloud necessarily, unless you're a fan of about eight to te- ten teams. What am I talking about? What is this specter? It's a seven foot three Frenchman by way of Northern Africa named Victor Wambanyama. The tank for Victor is on. It has already impacted the upcoming NBA season in major ways. That's what I'm talking about. We're talking about the 18-year-old, 7'4", French phenom who is universally proclaimed as the number one draft pick in the 2023 NBA draft. We're talking about a guy who many say has more hype and expectations than LeBron James did coming out of high school. NBA teams are already positioning themselves for the tank of the century to get him. So who is he? If you're a casual fan, not deep into the recruiting weeds, who is Wembenyama? Pretty much everyone who has been on the cover of sports magazines before ever stepping foot on the court, Victor Wembenyama has more hype than them. He's already becoming a household name on NBA chat shows who are breaking down his EuroLeague plays like it's the NBA Finals. Jalen Rose on Jalen and Jacoby just devoted an entire segment to who Victor Wembanyama compares himself to. Kent, it's not one player, it's two players. Kevin Durant and Giannis, which may be the most scary combination one could even imagine. One longtime NBA scout is on record saying he is the most intriguing long-term prospect in NBA history. The hype is immense. And he's got talent, immense talent. He's got handles like Chet Holmgren, a three-point shot he can hit from the logo like Steph Curry. A great passer who has moves around the basket. He can switch on defense on the perimeter. He has a mid-range jumper like DeMar DeRozan. He's a demon as a rim protector. Some people say that he's better on defense than Rudy Gobert is right now. He's got all the tools to be a generational player, and he doesn't turn 19 until January 2023. So how does this affect the league? One article suggests that Victor Wamayama is so good that as many as 10 teams might tank on purpose just for a 14% chance of landing the number one overall pick. We'll know more by All-Star break, but teams are already dismantling their rosters in an effort to put up as few wins as humanly possible this year. So who are the likeliest candidates to tank? Let's go into it. Number eight, Orlando. Orlando already drafted Paolo, but they are perennial losers. So you really can't rule anything out. They're not They don't have much goodwill built up around around a fan base that, let's be honest, is dwindling by the second. But they already have this number one pick to build around in Paolo, who's another big that likes to play on the perimeter. So although they are number eight, I don't necessarily know. They might just mess around and get the number one pick on accident because that's how Orlando rolls. Number seven, OKC. Sam Presti's a wild card, man. I think he is trying to build something for the future and is willing to tank for as long as it takes to get that. If he decides that this year is not the year to make this exponential leap forward like the Grizz did a couple of years back, I think they are 100% in on the tank for Victor. Especially considering we'll know when guys go down with random bone bruises, random toenail clippings, like Josh Giddy out with uh, a neck scratch 
You know, you'll see that. Out for the year with the next scratch, Josh Giddy. Detroit Pistons. So the Pistons have been tanking for like 10 years. So what's another year, right? It's fine. You got Jalen Duran. You got Sadiq Bey. You got Cade Cunningham. You got the kid out of Purdue, Jaden uh, Jalen Har- Jaden Ivy. Excuse me. There's so many Jadens and Jalens. Forget them. But I don't think another year of losing by two or three for 15 straight games is bad for them. I don't think that's going to hurt their development at all. So they 100%, I think, will target someone like Victor. If you add him to the roster that they already have, they could be dangerous. Number five is Indiana, a relatively new team to the tank game. They don't quite understand why they need to do it. And I think their owner is not particularly excited about the fact that they have to, considering that they have legitimately fun and interesting pieces. But they're, they are in it. Let's be honest. They are a year away from being a year away. Would the fan base accept a real God-honest attempt at tanking, like, a, like an audacious, disrespectful one like Portland put together last year? I think they would. For Victor, as the hype around Victor grows, the appetite for the tank will grow as well from the fan base. Pacers have a smart and dedicated following, and I think they would buy into the fact that they are multiple years away from truly competing in a very stacked Eastern Conference. The Pacers' front office is steady, they're smart, and if any team can successfully pull off a tank while not alienating their fan base, I think it's Indiana. Number four is a dark horse. Team's already a hot mess. It's the Washington Wizards. Sure, yeah. They're telling the world they want to win. They're telling Beal they want to win. Beal's telling the world he wants to win. But then look at the actions that they've made. Do those actions tell you that they're interested in competing? They're definitely circulating little rumors into the rumor mill that they're going after Donovan Mitchell, which we know they are not, that they are going after KD, which we know that they are not that they may try to get Julius Randle as as a third team in the Kevin Durant trade, which would make absolutely, or the Donovan Mitchell trade, excuse me, which would make absolutely no sense. They're not trying to win next year. Seems like Tommy Shepard might be doing this on purpose. When you draft Johnny Davis, a two-guard, to pair with your other two-guard, kind of feels like maybe you're not interested in competing anytime soon. Number three, Houston. What's another year of a rebuild post-Harden, really? I'm not sure if the Rockets are a 30-win team or a 20-win team or a 17-win team, but let's be honest, they're not a winning team. They've got a lot of fun pieces. If they get halfway through the season and have 12 wins, look for them to like let their foot slide all the way off the gas. Because it's not fully on the gas as it is. But like look, like you know how you get high and sometimes you forget you're driving and your foot slides off and you just realize you slow down and you look around and you're like, oh, I'm not moving? Yeah, that's the Houston Rockets right now. Number two and one, they're in a dead heat with one another. Utah. Utah is in the middle of an elite, sophisticated, world-class teardown. They only have Conley and Donovan Mitchell remaining, left to be ditched. If you think that they're not going to be, you are mistaken. Trader Danny Ainge's stockpiled an egregious number of first-rounders already. He is going to get as many as seven more first-round picks in the Donovan Mitchell trade. He's turning into Sam Presti overnight, isn't he? That will make him loaded in case the Jazz don't get the number one overall pick. Hey, I'll give you 10 first-round picks for the number one overall pick. That's how much he wants Victor. They can just simply overwhelm another team with assets. And, and then, in the news, start to sprinkle some negative things about Victor like they did about <laughs> Jason Tatum. And all of a sudden, the team gets cold feet and says, you know what, it is 10 first-round picks. Besides, this team's going to suck no matter what. The league knows that. That's why the Jazz have gone from 14 nationally televised games last year to one this year against the Knicks. Even Adam Silver knows this team is fully in on the tank, and they are dog shit beyond dog shit. 
Number one is San Antonio. The preseason leaders in the clubhouse in the tank for Victor competition are the San Antonio Spurs. They have cleared the decks of pretty much all of their talent, made it very easy to explain why they're looking at a probably like a 15 or 16 win season. You say in pop, we trust. Who would you trust more than the guy who already shepherded three international players to stardom, superstardom, in Duncan, Manu, and Parker? Do I think tanking for Victor is worth it is the question. My answer is maybe. Maybe. I do think, though, we should start to discuss, because it's August and it's the new cycle as we know it, let's talk about some things Victor has wrong with him. Shall, shall we? Let's, let's pick this kid apart. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Victor Wabanyamas? Because that's what we do. Can't hype him up. We try to crash him down. Who is his comp? He says it's Giannis and KD. But we've got to go back into history and find his real comp. All the way back to Ralph Sampson of Virginia. Seven feet three, number one overall pick in the 1983 draft. Had a fine career. Ended up in the Hall of Fame. In today's game, probably would have been much more impactful considering that he liked to shoot, and back then, that was kind of not a thing. Very conducive game to today's era. Four-time All-NBA in a nine-year career. Why was his career shortened? Well, seven feet three guys tend to get banged up. And here we go with the Victor Wambayama weaknesses, his bones. The idea of injuries make this pick very intriguing. Chet Holmgren had three games of success in the summer league, and now NBA scouts are like, see, you can be a toothpick and withstand the bang and bruising of today's NBA game in an 82-game season. Listen, fine. Slim body, maybe it's viable. But the fact is, if you tank for Victor Wamiyama and he's not healthy, And his career is shortened like, say, Ralph Sampson, Sam Bowie, every other Blazers center that they've ever taken in history. It's a disaster. I'm telling you, it's a disaster. He only played 30. Victor Wambayama, 33 out of 76 games he's played this year. Missed the entire playoffs with a psoas injury. Add that to a shoulder contusion a fractured finger, and a stress fracture to his tibia, and it makes you say, rot roll, Scooby? Could this man be the second coming of a skinnier Greg Oden? That has got to be very worrisome. Tibia fracture is the same injury that derailed a ton of big guys, ranging from Yao Ming, Greg Oden, and yes, even Sam Bowie. All of this means the specter of Wambayama will cast a very long shadow across the entire season. One thing is dead certain. To the loser goes the victor.